Let's be honest. We all have looked up prices for an original Juno 1R6 or Cork MS20. Quite quickly we realized that vintage gear is just for the rich and wealthy. Or is it? Hi, I am Synths and Sounds and I am not rich and wealthy. Yet I managed to pick up six vintage synthesizers from the 1980s and earlier over the last year and altogether I didn't even pay 700 euros for them. But don't get me wrong, this video isn't made for me to brag about my gear. It's rather made here to share my experiences with buying vintage gear, what you have to look for and what you need to do to get a really good deal. So stick around until the end to figure out what was the most amazing deal I could find this year and don't forget to subscribe for more synths and sounds. Oh, and if you can't stand my accent for that long time, you can jump to the conclusion right now. I recorded the intro before I saw Simon's commentary about his best synth of 2019. Great find Simon, where did you get the idea? Or you can of course get a Korg M1 for 250 euro. But yeah, I guess now this counts as a pretty detailed response video. Buying vintage gear is totally different from buying a new synthesizer. First, you will not be able to order it at some big online shop. And second, you will buy a used instrument. This means that I will have to cover a few more relevant questions aside of the price. Like where did I get it? Did I have to put in additional work to get it running? Did it have any additional costs aside of the purchase price? And what isn't working on my vintage synthesizers? Before we get to the good deals, let's start with my worst deal of 2019. A broken Yamaha PS35. The PS35 from 1983 dates back to the early stages of keyboards. While you do not have a ton of editing options, it surely gives your sound a unique touch and offers some interesting beats. If it works. I found this one on sale by a second-hand shop that was selling out. I paid just 27 euro for it. But since the shop was across Switzerland, I paid another 35 euro for shipping. I still thought it would be a good deal, but I got delivered a broken keyboard. It was only packed in bubble wrap and did not even come in a box. When I tried to play it, the entire front panel wasn't working. I might try to repair it in the future, but it surely was a bad deal. So what do we learn out of this? It's always better to pick up the gear by yourself. If you can test the gear before actually paying for it, you can make sure that it's properly working and transport it safely yourself. Let's come to the cooler finds. I check online marketplaces regularly for classified ads. Quite often people just want to get rid of whatever lies in their attic. Most times these people are not too knowledgeable about how much they can demand for their gear. So if you check the advertisements in the right moment, you can make an amazing find. As I did with the Casio Tone 701. I found it again for another 27 euro. Let's see how much people over at Reverb demand for it. As you can quickly see, Reverb is not the right place for us, so let's forget about Reverb. I had to drive across Switzerland and pay around 25 euro for a train ticket, but it was surely worth it for a perfectly working vintage keyboard from 1981 that uses a unique sign synthesis method to create sounds. Well, it didn't come with the original light stylus to read barcode music, but it has an awesome analog drum machine inside and is surely a nice instrument. So remember, classified ads are your friends. While you will have to dig through tons of trash advertisements, you can find hidden gems for little money. But while you can find something cool on Reverb.com immediately, classified ads need patience. You need to check marketplaces regularly, use different search phrases and dig through many many advertisements. 
Also, you often won't find the exact thing you are looking for, so stay open-minded during your search. While I was looking for affordable drum machines, I found this beauty instead. We can use Reverb.com as a reference guide for us. If something isn't remarkably cheaper than on Reverb.com, you probably shouldn't get it. Let's have a look at my second best deal of this year. It's the Casio FC1 sampling synthesizer from 1987. I made an extensive video on the FC1's sounds recently, so let's just say it sounds amazing. I was looking for vintage samplers when I again found this beauty in classified ads. I paid 227 euro for it, but again I had to pay another 50 bucks for a train ride to pick it up. Aside of one broken key that I could easily replace, I could check that it's perfectly working when I went to pick it up. While it's quite a bit more expensive than what I've mentioned before, this is professional audio gear and has more versatility than most modern instruments that you can buy for that price. In my experience, looking for unpopular brands can provide you with some awesome gear. A Casio FC1 is a great replacement for an Akai sampler, an RZ1 brings you close to an Oberheim DX, and a VZ1 makes a cheaper DX7. Another brand you should always have an eye on is Elises. I always use an Elises MMT8 sequencer in my studio, and recently I got myself a nice MIDI verb for just 32 euro. Before we get to my best deal of the year, let me bring up a few honorable mentions. I got a Casio HT3000 for just 32 euros. While it looks like a typical Casio keyboard, you get full access to the synthesis, including filter, LFO and envelope editing. It even includes a cool 80s PCM drum machine and it's pretty much as cheap as you can get a real editable synth engine. My most expensive buy, on the other hand, was a JX-8P for 360 euro. With the Roland JX-8P or Alpha Juno, you can get great analog Juno-like sounds. They are just hidden behind a rather annoying digital interface. But both are great options if you are looking for huge analog sounds for little money. What could be better than these deals? Even cheaper and even older than the Casio Tone. The one to get the throne of best deals in 2019. It is the Filicorda GM752. As we have seen, vintage gear is valued very differently by different people. Let's for example take the neighbor of the grandfather of the girlfriend of my synthesizer friend. He had a filicorda organ from the late 60s. But it didn't turn on anymore, so it was worthless for him. I, on the other hand, was very lucky when said friend's girlfriend's grandfather's neighbor somehow heard rumors about a weird guy that makes love with synthesizers and is looking out for ancient electronic organs. So the organ found its way to me and I didn't have to pay a single Swiss franc nor euro nor dollar for it. Since it didn't turn on, the first step was to download the service manual and go through the components to figure out what was wrong. I got assistance from my father who is quite knowledgeable about electronics and with the help of a multimeter and soldering iron we managed to figure out that it was just a broken on-off switch and a fuse that had blown. After two days spent soldering and measuring, we were done repairing the organ except for the spring reverb which still does not work. But all I paid was 10 euro for a new old stock fuse. Unfortunately the organ is so large that I did not yet manage to transport it to my studio and do a proper recording with it. But believe me if I say, it sounds great. So remember to always let your friends know about your weird obsessions. 
gear might find its way to you over the most unlikely connections. But you should always be prepared to do some repairs yourself. Many 1980s synths come with internal batteries that have to be soldered out and replaced. Maybe your synth will have a broken key or a non-functional knob. While these things are usually not hard to repair, they occur rather often. So be prepared to do some repairs yourself. Or at least you should know some friends that know about electronics and how to handle a soldering iron. If you can do your own repairs, it will open up even better deals and it will save you a lot of money in the long term. Well, those have been my best deals on vintage gear in 2019. While I went for some unconventional choices of gear, you gotta admit that I found some amazing things for quite little money. So if you want to do the same, remember all the advices that I gave to you during this video. First of all, look for general second-hand places, not places specifically made for musicians. You want to go for the really good deals, or you could say you want to have the deal for less than it is worth, and you don't find those kind of deals on musicians' sites. While if you go for very general places, they will just sell general gear and quite often they will not know what it's actually worth. And those are really the kind of deals that you want to go for. Second, be patient. Don't expect to go online right now and find the perfect deal for you. It's quite unlikely to happen. Most often I found the really good deals when I wasn't looking too actively for it. I just check many different places quite regularly and once a good deal pops up, you need to be there before anyone else. So it's much more about patience and regularity before looking in depth and finding the good deal right at the moment. Third, if you find the deal of your dreams, it's best to pick it up yourself, since otherwise it can quite quickly turn into a nightmare. If you go pick your gear up yourself, you can make sure everything is working. You can check all the knobs and buttons and all the keys and you can make sure that if you go for a polyphonic instrument, it will deliver the full polyphony, since a broken voice can be quite annoying. So it's definitely important to be careful if you don't want to be scammed or disappointed. Fourth, be prepared to do some repairs yourself. Old gear will break eventually. So if you manage to do simple repairs yourself, it's a great way to save hundreds of euros or dollars that you would pay otherwise for external repairs. If you follow my advices, I'm sure you will be able to find some good vintage gear for yourself in the future. And trust me if I say that working with vintage gear is really amazing. It's a kind of creativity that you don't get out of a lot of modern gear if you are very limited in your functions and you have to make the best out of this. And additionally to that, a vintage synthesizer just carries so much history within itself. Just knowing that maybe 30 or 40 years ago somebody already made some dope music with that instrument, it's just something that somehow sticks with the instrument and makes it even more amazing to play it today. But that's it for today. Make sure to leave a comment, since I always enjoy reading your comments. So tell me maybe what was your best deal of 2019? What awesome gear did you manage to pick up? And maybe what is your advice uh, searching for vintage gear and where do you find it? So I'm really interested in that, so leave it in the comments. Leave a like if you liked the video and as always, don't forget to subscribe for more synths and sounds.